Hello, we wanted to give you a little bit of information about climbing Misty. So this will be just a quick and dirty and then uh, you're going to see the footage. Yep, yep. We've got a little bit of uh, our experience with climbing the mountain. Right. So uh, the first thing we want to we want to talk about really quickly is the way that we did not go up Misty, which is right. via the uh, Aguana Blanca entrance on the north side of the volcano. And we talked about that in the last video and I'll link that video down below. Yep. So one of the most important things to remember about getting on the northern trail is that there is an entrance fee. We don't exactly know what it is, but we're nearly positive that it's 70 soles per person to get into the park. Right. And this is the easiest trail to do. Yep. Um, but you definitely, definitely need a 4x4. C-O-C. And, like, yeah, you need that. Yeah. So we'll move now on to the trail that we did, which was Grau. Yep. Um, and from Arequipa, from the city center, um, it took us about 50 minutes by car. Yep. And the the if, if you're looking to get transportation to the trailhead from the city center, you should be able to find a taxi for 25 soles. So we had a friend drive us, and there is a gate yes. off the highway. Which very is important. Very important. We didn't know it. Yes. Um, so the gate opens at 7.30 in the morning. So if you go before 7.30 like we did... Well, just don't do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> so the, the, the gate is right off the highway. So the highway is indicated here in yellow. The gate is indicated here in green. And you can see that there is some distance between that highway and the actual trailhead itself. And so the, the road that you actually, uh, that, that separates the highway from the trailhead is indicated here in orange. And that's about seven kilometers long, about four and a half miles. And you'll have to either get, again, a, a, a four by four, very likely a 4x4. I don't think a taxi would take you up that road um, uh, to the trailhead from the highway. Or just hike it. Or just hike it. We, we, we ended up hiking it. Yep. Um, so the trailhead is indicated in red, um, and that is at about 3,415 meters, meters, which is about 11,200 feet. Mm -hmm. um, and then the distance from the trailhead to the summit is about 6.5 kilometers, which is around 4 miles. Yep. And there's, there's plenty of places to camp around the trailhead if, if that's where you want to uh, have a waypoint. Um, that's what we ended up doing, and you'll, again, you'll see that in the footage ahead. And um, the only thing I would mention is that we, it was recommended to us to not camp in view of the road, which right. is right at the, the top of the trailhead. Right, so. right. Um, so the base camp is about uh, three, and, uh, three to five hours from the trailhead, and the base camp you can see here in blue. And then from the base camp to the summit is about uh, two and a half to four and a half hours, depending on your um, <laughs> tiredness level, your endurance. Your endurance. Um, at that altitude, things don't really move very quickly. Yep. Um, so there were actually a ton of people on the trail, which yep. was kind of nice. Yep. Um, so you can meet different people along the way. Yep, and when we were at base camp, for example, just in our, our trip, there were about 20 people there. So if you want to have other people around or, or be sure that, uh, that there's help if, if you need it, um, there seems to be a pretty regular amount of people on the trail. For, for us, there was about 20 others uh, on Grau when we were there. Yep, so I guess now we'll just get right into it. So enjoy our misadventures. Yes, and if you're planning a trip on, up Misty, good luck. Suerte. Good morning. It's about uh, 4.30 and I feel like I just want to climb the damn mountain so I can get back into my into a sleeping bag and go to sleep. So come with us and uh, enjoy the ride. What are you doing? I'm making a tea combination. What, is, what, is that, what does that even mean? Uh, I'm combining tea. I, I feel like I want to be awake, so green tea. Okay. I feel like I don't want else to sickness, so coca tea. Well, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Now we're thinking. Well, we're on the first part here, and already it has been an adventure. We've already scaled a ravine. Hopped a barbed wire fence and uh, broken through a gate. So, all in all, it's good. 
Uh, we had to give a little bit of a um, improvised trailhead, we'll say. And uh, we had a little bit of uh, rappelling and, and, and scaling of a wall. It's been pretty dangerous. I sunk into the uh, quicksand. The adventure has, what, we're 20 minutes in and we've had all these, so. Yeah, oh, uh, and this is Ethan. I haven't <laughs> met him before. It's true, it's true. Fellow Midwesterner. Yes. So let's do it. Let's do it. We are almost to the road that is almost to the trailhead. Uh, we're trying to make the trailhead by 9. That would put us about an hour and a half behind schedule. Uh, pretty nice view so far. Um, Pichu Pichu looks nice. Kachani's hiding a little bit. Misty is imposing over the top of us. Uh, just had a little break. Getting some, getting some charge on the old phone there with the solar panel. And uh, having some coca leaves. Lily says they're really tasty. <laughs> All right. See you in a bit. By myself, um, I was having some altitude issues, so we made camp, and uh, Clint and Ethan have gone to summit that bad boy, and uh, I'm here at camp. I brought two library books, so I feel like that should last me well enough, and uh, we have like a room with a view. It's a pretty cool campsite. Okay, chicos. We uh, had a little bit of a detour. We are all right now, but check out this view. Holy cows. So we're making our way up. We've got, uh, I don't know, probably, what would you say, a thousand more meters. This is our view. This is our objective. We're getting close. It was fun. Uh, we had, there's a, there's a part of the trail that's not far from here where we got off trail, and then we knew it coming back, and we still got off trail, but we find out, we found our way. Uh, I made it to base camp, which is at about, what was it, 40, 4,200 feet, 4,300 feet? Meters. Meters, sorry. 15,000 feet. Yeah, 15,000 feet, and then Ethan almost got to the top. How do you feel about that, Ethan? I feel okay. Yeah, I, I let my pride down, and, uh, and I made the right decision to turn back. Next time I'll do it with people, not by myself. And, like, in the daytime. In the daytime, right. when it's not freezing. Yeah. Right, right, right. But it's really mentally challenging, uh. going through all the gravel. Yeah, there's a, there's a spot about two-thirds of the way up, maybe half the way up, where it's nothing but soft, soft material that just takes every one of your steps about half away and it's just really energy consuming and it's it's not an easy time and it's psychologically damaging. Is it like sand? It's like silt. Volcanic silt, yeah. Mm -hmm. Volcanic ash. 
um, which is really pretty and it's really soft and it's it's kind of unique, but it's it just kills your energy going up. So um, coming back down though, we made really good time. So going up to base camp took us what three hours? Yeah. And then from the trailhead to base camp. And then I think coming down to here to the trailhead again was about just shy of two hours, maybe. Maybe right around two hours. So we made good time. We had fun. Um, I'd do it again. Yeah? I'd do it again. No. I think we could, we could sum it depending on uh, how much time we make. Four hours from yeah. the yeah. base camp. Yeah. Yeah. And if we had one extra day, there would be no problem. Yeah. No problem at all. So if you're if you're a moderately experienced hiker, this would be this would be definitely doable. Now it's time to pack up. Mm-hmm.